Have you ever uh, wondered what it takes to transform a good script into a great one? Well, today, well, we talk about crafting uh, the fourth draft, how to use feedback to enhance your script. Uh, we're going to dive into the pivotal process of writing the fourth draft of a script using feedback from your table read. But Thomas, why is that important? The, it's important because the fourth draft is your chance to refine your script into a polished piece that resonates deeply with audiences and meets industry standards. We say resonate often here because the whole goal is to have pieces connect with your audience because writing is all about an emer emotional journey, not only for your characters, but for the reader themselves. But uh, more importantly, what is a fourth draft? Well, this phase of screenwriting is about incorporating specific feedback from readers to fine-tune dialogue, structure, and pacing. It's a crucial step where you shift from broad strokes to detailed craftsmanship. Now, if you've been following along, you know that uh, this is a, a another step in the process of writing a script. And you might say, well, why can't the fourth draft uh, just be the fourth draft that I personally wrote? And it can be. Uh, these are just suggestions. These are just one of many millions of ways you can potentially uh, look at your fourth draft. The only reason I suggested it in this step-by-step uh, -step is because the first draft is for you where you get it out, uh, you know, and there's some editing and stuff like that. You know, you want to clean it up, right? Uh, but more importantly... Um, uh, the second draft is where you get to jump on it yourself. So you get to take a break for a little bit and then you come back and you go, let me attack this with new eyes so I can personally do whatever I can. But after that, you want to make sure that the foundation of your script is working. That's why you do uh, uh, the reads with um, the first read with basically alpha readers, really understanding the foundation, the character movement, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the step before this particular one to get to the fourth draft is so that you can hear a table read that allows it to kind of move through the characters to make sure that they are coming alive on the page. Remember, a script is much different than a novel. A novel becomes immersive through the prose and sensory details, allowing the reader to flow through it. Whereas with a screenplay, the immersion comes through the emotional truth that is resonating with the audience member uh, through the character's performance uh, of the dialogue and physical uh, uh, movement of the piece. So when you can see that, you can tell if your piece is working. But the fourth draft is where you take that information from the table read and you start implementing the changes. So without that critical detail, you're just doing more biased editing if it's just you doing every draft is just you writing and then you reading and going oh let me fix that you can do that but you're missing a fundamental element which is the emotional truth through the actor's performance or the emotional truth through the reader's uh, uh, participation right through how they are hearing it or experiencing it um so that's why these steps incorporate uh, two steps with you writing and then uh, two steps with table reads of different variations. Anyway, with that said, <clears throat> I like to give you some tips on uh, approaching your fourth draft. OK, so the first one is evaluating feedback. Now, the short of it is you want to learn to distinguish between subjective opinions and constructive feedback that can generally improve your script and objective facts. All right. Uh, so the long of it really dives into that, the objective versus subjective feedback. You know, it's your job to distinguish between feedback that offers specific actionable suggestions and feed that feedback that is based more on personal taste. You want to focus on comments that address structural issues, character inconsistencies, or unclear story elements. There is a big difference between a character saying, I don't really like this person because I like quieter, more romantic uh, 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 characters. That's a subjective opinion about the work, but an objective might be that uh, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. Or, um, 
you know, uh, why did we jump from here to here? Uh, you know, how did they get here? Like those things are more general, but they're m more important because the way a person feels probably has more weight to it than what their preference is. If their preference is, oh, I wish there was more action because I like action and story. That's not necessarily a strong feedback note. Um, but if it doesn't have action and they say, you know, uh, I kind of gotten uh, it was a little stale here. It felt like nothing was really happening. That might have more merit to it because you have to look at it and say, are they doing anything more than just sitting on a couch and talking to each other? OK, and this is why you need to prioritize your changes as well, because when you're hearing subjective or objective opinions, not all feedback will be equally important. So you have to prioritize changes based on how they impact the overall story. In fact, if someone says, I really wish there was more action and you're writing a romance, clearly, even if that was objective, it's not a valid feedback. I mean, it's not valid feedback for your particular goals and vice versa. If it is an action flick and they go, I really wish there was more of a romantic element to the story. That, too, will probably not be, unless, of course, you have an action-adventure romance. That's a different story. All right. Now, uh, feedback that helps clarify your theme, strength, strengthens your plot or deepen character development should be considered first because these are universal. Uh, if they are seeing themes or, more importantly, if they say, I, I, oh, your, your story is about this theme, this is what I feel it is about, and it's not. Because you wrote it a certain way and you're like, oh, I didn't even think about it. There's a couple things you could do with that. You could either dig into that and say, maybe those themes are here or those were not the themes I was going for. And I noticed they didn't see the themes I was trying to represent in the story. So maybe I got to go back and do some work. Right. So it might not be specific things they're asking for. But if they are specifically noticing a theme that you a did not intend or B is not there. That's something to pay attention to when it comes to strengthening the plot. Does the plot make sense? You know, why are they going here? How, you know, I don't understand how this happened. You know, that seemed a little too easy, was it? Right. So DSX marketers exist, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, deepening character development. If somebody says, you know, this character kind of vanishes in that scene, that's a palpable uh, critique that is saying they're not doing. Why are they there then? What's their purpose? Or if they're like, you know, uh, for example, if you felt the character should be feeling a certain thing as the writer and they're not sensing that, that's something to pay attention to. And because of this, you want to consider the source of each piece of feedback because different readers bring different perspectives and you want to balance them to maintain a clear vision of your story while ensuring it appeals to a diverse audience. And this is why when you're listening to someone, as we said earlier, if you're writing action, you might not want to romance uh, uh, someone who loves romance over action, but uh, if you have an action uh, adventure of romance, maybe you want a romance reader in there and an action reader. You want to kind of build it out. The most important thing, though, is you want to have uh, men and women reading. Uh, you also want to have uh, diversity in uh, representation. So um, now, more importantly, though, like I, I wrote a script once uh, where there were uh, six different characters and each character had a different faith. Each character is from a different background. Each character had a different culture. Um, so, you know, when it came to the Catholic character, I tried to get Catholic readers uh, to make sure that I was representing the Catholic face. And the same thing with the Jewish uh, character. I tried to get Jewish readers or more specifically, some people that practice Judaism, some people that lived within a Jewish family and some people that weren't necessarily uh, 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 they were Jewish by birth, but didn't necessarily practice it just so I can get different uh, variations of their input based on what was in those scripts. So those are things to think about, too, when you're working with evaluating feedback, who is the source of that feedback? Dialogue refinement. Now, obviously, it's a script. Screenplays heavily rely on dialogue. Uh, so the short of it is you want to focus on sharpening your dialogue. Each line should reveal character or advance the plot without excess. More importantly, this rule is very effective. Every single line should do one or more of these three things. 
plot, character development, or world building. If it's if it's a throwaway line, it might not be worth it. However, a throwaway line might be character. You have to decide based on the way it moves the moment, the, the scene, you know, is it breathing through this character? You know, they're they're off putting, their their huff, their disgust, uh, maybe their silence. That's all that could all be character. So you have to be careful when you're working and developing your characters because dialogue will represent that element. Um, but more importantly, what I'm saying is dialogue needs purpose. So the long of it is each piece of dialogue should have a clear purpose. Dialogue should do one or more of these three things, which is plot, character, or world building. So does it move the plot forward? Does it reveal something about the character's personality or history? Or does it add to the world in any way other than being descriptive? If a line doesn't serve a clear purpose, consider cutting or rewriting it. Now, believe it or not, you could have a line that does both plot and character or plot, character, and world building. You could have a line that just does world building. You could have a line that just does character. And you could have a line that just does plot. In fact, you could have three different lines uh, distinctly there. Uh, that does one of each in that passage. The uh, thing you want to avoid with dialogue is thick passage that does the exposition work for you because I need the audience to know this. You might want to turn that into a discussion on the page and it'll allow that to represent more uh, pacing control and also uh, evolve your character's development on the page itself. Um, now, again, when it comes to dialogue, remember natural speech patterns are important. So you want to ensure that dialogue sounds natural. And so while you're taking the notes from the previous step, pay attention to the rhythms and vocabulary specific to each character based on their background, education, and personality. You want to pay attention. I personally uh, like to record the sessions and then listen to them while I'm rereading and, and uh, going over my notes. All right. And one of the best rules for dialogue is trim the fat. You know, you want to avoid overly exposition dialogue. You want to show rather than tell as much as possible. And you want to tighten dialogue to remove redundance and make uh, you want to make it more crisp and impactful. Uh, and I know it's it's the script. So you're like, what do you mean show don't tell? Well, what I mean is you could show life through dialogue without it being face value and it's a difference between i can't stand you i wish you would leave right now versus being off-putting you know uh you know i came to see if you and, and then dad were all right yeah we're fine uh i you know you could talk to me right yeah yeah i have your number yeah but i i haven't heard from you since uh you know dad had the heart attack uh you know like know that i'm available Oh, yeah, you've always been available ever since we were kids. I had no choice with that. I, I, you know, mom, mom and dad left and I went with mom because, you know, she had to go. You know, I, yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. No problem. I know you're here. Like that kind of dialogue says, you know, and obviously that's just me kind of riffing. But that dialogue right there says more with less. All right. Pace, uh, pacing adjustments. Pacing is so important. The short of it, use this draft, the fourth draft, to synchronize the pacing. Identify any sagging parts of the script and tighten them for better flow. Remember, pacing, by definition, is the speed at which information is presented to the audience. All right, so the long of it is how do you identify, uh, basically your job here is to identify pacing issues. Uh, so if there are any notes or feedback on pacing in if issues, you want to look for areas where the story does drag or move too quickly, especially because some of the feedback might not be able to point it out. Uh, and more importantly, how they feel that it's going, it, you know, it's taking, this scene feels like it's dragging or this, this scene went by too quick. Those are pacing issues, right? So, uh, this is really easy to recognize, especially if your dialogues are like you're just monologue after monologue and monologue. You know, that's why if you look at a, uh, a Quentin Tarantino piece, yes, there's a lot of dialogue, but it moves because there is still movement. Not only is there movement within the scene, there's very much character represented on the scene, but the dialogue also moves through these feelings and these themes. They become rhythms and, and poetry. All right. 
Not that I'm a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, but I'm just saying as an example, uh, we can still recognize talent. Because remember, there is such thing as a uh, good and bad uh, product, like a good example of writing and a bad example of writing. But that has nothing to do with preference. I love the room. And Tommy Wiesel uh, absolutely has to know that his project is terrible. Not good or bad. It's terrible writing. It's a terrible film, but it's oh so good. You know what I'm saying? Our preference to liking something or disliking something has nothing to do with if it's good or not. Because it could be some great dialogue in your script, but the pacing can be really bad. And if that's the case, it makes it bad. Doesn't mean you're a bad writer. It just means that that piece is bad. However, somebody, I mean, if you could give 50% of the audience to be like, no, I like that it dragged. That actually, this is my kind of film. Then you found your audience, just like Tommy Wiseau did. You know, but he can't make another film. <laughs> I mean, he could, I guess. Anyway, uh, so this also comes down to, uh, when it comes to pacing, you also want to look at your transitions, you know. You want to improve how the scenes are transitioning between one another. Because, again, they could be reading and be like, how did I get there? Oh, that seemed that was quick. Uh, weren't they just three days ago at this moment? You know, so look at each scene and allow it to naturally lead to the next. That does not mean you have to do step by step, which basically means, uh, all right, we got to get to the store. All right, we're in the room. The scene takes place in the room. We got to get to the store. All right, let's go to the store. All right, the next scene is them leaving the front of the house. So that's an external. All right, the next scene is them getting in the car and driving. So now that's interior, exterior, because they're in the car, right? So they're driving the car. And then it's they get to the parking lot, which becomes an exterior location because they are going, they are stopping in the parking lot. We set up and we film them in the parking lot, getting out of the car. And then we film them in the store. No. We got to get to the store. All right, let's go. We have only so much time to get to 7-Eleven. Great. The next scene can be 7-Eleven. Okay. All right. The other thing is adjusting the length of the scenes to make sure that the pacing uh, it doesn't drag or speed uh, too continuously. You want to have jazz rhythms, right? You want to play around with stuff. So consider whether some scenes are too long or too short, uh, especially... When it comes to crucial scenes, you might want to extend it or play within the emotional beats. Uh, if they are more, let's do this so we could do this so we could do this kind of scenes, you might want that to play a little faster. It's all up to you. You're the creative uh, outlet. Oh, common mistakes. The short of it, you always want to, well, if you can help it, you want to avoid over editing. Well, it's important to make sub. Uh, uh, um, uh, well, is important to make uh, changes. Don't lose the script's original voice and charm. Before I get into the long of it, the reason I wrote this is because sometimes feedback can start derailing our original vision. You have to maintain your vision. That's why you should be listening to the general relativity of their feedback and not necessarily the specific elements i don't like this character because they're not funny is not helpful you listen and there might be something there but that might not be the main feedback you need because that character is not supposed to be funny okay so over editing might have that might lead to changing the voice of the script or your original voice of the script because of feed too much feedback uh, but additionally if you only are editing it yourself. Remember, the bias is you already know the story. When I say bias, it's not like a negative term. It's just saying you have the bias knowledge. You know everything that's going to happen, why it's happening, and how it should happen. So you're not looking through the cracks. You may think you're looking through the cracks, but your brain is already connecting everything to make sense. So what would be a crack might not appear as a crack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but additionally, if you keep rewriting and editing it yourself without any feedback, you might lose the original voice and charm of the script. So what's the long of it? Well, it's important to make necessary changes. Be aware of over editing, which can strip the script of its originality and, and voice. Preserve the unique aspect of your script that give it character and distinction. 
This is why you want to ensure that edits and rewrites do not obscure the core message and, and your original intent of the script. Keep the fundamental themes and narratives intact while refining the delivery. Okay. Uh, because each edit can potentially introduce new errors or inconsistencies. Always review the script thoroughly after changes to ensure new problems haven't been created. This is why sometimes uh, if you do a nice thick uh, rewrite or you do a lot of critical changes because there were neat, it happens sometimes, there were needs for critical changes, you're going to have to basically start the process a little bit over in the sense of you're going to need uh, alpha readers, and then you're going to have to rewrite from that, and then you're going to need beta readers again, or from the table readers. Uh, before we keep going, or remember, uh, you know, if you're enjoying what you're watching and you like uh, what you're hearing, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. That's that's really the secret to the YouTube growth, right? Um, we're not going to do a walkthrough for this particular lesson. Uh, this is more of a, 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 just a, a quick overview. So I'm going to give you uh, my final thoughts in a moment, but a quick question. Uh, what's the toughest feedback you've ever received and how did it improve your script and how did you handle it? Let us know in the, the, uh, the, the comments below because it's important to share those experiences because sometimes we hear stuff that might not uh, resonate with us, you know? All right. Final thoughts. As you approach the fourth draft of your script, remember that this stage is less about major overhauls and more about refining the details that make your screenplay a shine. It's an opportunity to polish every element from dialogue to pacing, ensuring that each component works harmoniously to support your narrative. You want to keep in mind that every edit you make should have a purpose, whether it's strengthening a character's voice, tightening the plot, or enhancing the thematic elements, your revisions should always aim to elevate the quality of your script. This draft, the fourth draft, is about perfecting what you've built and preparing it for critical eyes of producers, directors, and eventually of the audience. It's crucial to maintain your unique voice. Crucial to maintain your unique voice and vision throughout the editing process. Well, feedback is uh, invaluable. Balance it with your creative instincts. Remember, it is as it is because you see it as so, and the way it moves through you, these worlds and stories, is your voice. So ensure that the script remains true to your original version, even as you incorporate necessary adjustments ultimately the process of revising a script can be as creative and fulfilling as writing the first draft so embrace this part of the journey as a chance to really connect with your story and its characters each revision brings you closer to the best version of your work lastly take pride in the progress you make with each draft every revision uh, revision is a step forward in your development as a writer the fourth draft is a significant, a significant milestone, but it's also part of an ongoing process of learning, growing, and perfecting your craft. Next video in the series will be um, basically a table read with the audience, uh, small or large, and you take notes from both the readers and the audience and what you hear. Tape or film to listen back. All right, as always, you know, you want to keep uh, developing the right mindset, truth in action, peace and harmony. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.